Hello cookbook friends and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at Simply Simon Suppers. <laughs> yes, alliteration. So this is cool. This is by Michael Simon and unfortunately I, I admit he is not somebody that I am familiar with but it says fix it with food fans will be happy to know that Michael has included an index in the back of the book detailing which recipes are flour free, dairy free, and meat free so fans of his previous books and those with autoimmune tailored diets can easily find plenty of supper time go-to's. That's cool. So this book is quite cool. There's a lot of really awesome things about it, including just making meal times easier. You don't have to necessarily go and plan every little bit of your meal for the week. So we'll go into that. This is how he's divided his chapters. So we have cozy comforts, hot and easy going. Uh, we have turning brisk, holidays, desserts, but batch co cocktails. So lots of cool stuff and cute puppy. He was distracting me, he's adorable. So here is what this cookbook looks like. It is vibrant, it's beautiful and it's easy to follow. So first we have this citrus salad. It says it serves for, here's our list of ingredients all in US measurement. And then we have our directions. There's not really a description here of where this recipe comes from, but here we have an entire food, just a table setting. None of these are necessarily labeled. Um, some of them are like, for instance, this says pita bread page 31. But when you look on the next page, this is what is featured on this page. So you get a glimpse of what your table could also look like. So over there in that picture was, uh, we had braised lamb shanks, herby couscous, and an olive, olive and orange relish. All of those you can find right here. So here's the couscous, here's the lamb, and I believe this is the orange and olive marmalade. It continues even further and it has everything divided up and we're featuring that hummus with spiced beef and pine nuts shaved asparagus salad and the pita bread so all of those things are featured on the next pages after the photo and it's all broken down for you you can mix match you don't have to have what's on the table you can if you just don't have time and you're like i just want the lamb and the asparagus you can also do that and you can plan your meals really effectively but you get a visual of what your dishes could be like maybe that's a weekender sort of entire table setting and this might be more your pace for the weekday. So this is a pan roasted pork chop and onion gravy, and there is a shaved spring onion salad, all featured on the plate. I know a lot of us try our best to make sure we get like a little bit of everything. Sometimes it's hard and we're just like, you know what, I just want a bowl of mac and cheese, and that's okay. So this cookbook helps at least divide everything up so you can try to get like a mix of different things every week and not get bored and try to be pretty healthy too at the same time. So here we have a veggie moussaka and an herby braised gigante, gigante bean. I'm so sorry, I totally messed that one up. But look at that, so pretty. And you could probably get away with having some of this for leftovers the next day. So this says it serves six to eight. That's at least two meals if you've got a family of four. Um, and you can spread it out if you want to and add maybe something else like a couscous if you wanted to Whoa What is this the perfect noodles? They're placed in the perfect place uh, This says I don't know if this is the next page or the following page. I think it's the previous page here uh, So this is a meaty pasticcio and Greek village salad. We even get step-by-step -step photos here on how he makes everything. Look at how beautiful this is, crazy. So that serves eight to 10. I know we would be, uh, that would be like, we make it on Sunday and hope, and by Wednesday, we'll probably have it that many times in a row. And if it's super good, like that's fine. And it saves us some time. And you get this Greek village salad to have with it. Uh, and keeping it a little healthier, just spread it out a little bit. Here we have a grandma pie with maz and basil, and then there's an antipasto salad on the next page, I'm imagining. Here it is. Yum. 
Let me move a little bit forward here. But you kind of get the gist of how this cookbook is laid out. I love, I, I've said it before on this channel, like I do love when they give us like a full page of a table spread. Because one, a lot of the times I'm not really sure what I want to pair with something. Maybe I don't just want lasagna. It'd be nice to have a salad too. Um, so it's nice that they've given us other options like the salmon. This is actually the perfect example. I would love to roast a salmon, but then I'm like, what do I want to serve with the salmon? And it takes a lot, you know, if you're going through a long week at work and you're just, you know, you're constantly thinking at work and now you have to plan a menu. Oh, it's hard. So I like that he just does this for us. Very handy. So here we have a shaved cucumber and radish and a creamy dill sauce and the cute puppy. All right. Moving forward a little bit more, here we have grilled scallops, charred cauliflower steaks, and gremolata. Yum. My mouth is watering. I'm trying so hard not to drool. Grilled lobster with lime jalapeno butter and spicy Old Bay corn on the cob. I'm not seeing the corn on the cob, but you could have these two things together. Look at that. There it is. Yum. Perfect. This is a crunchy fried chicken with throw down fried chicken sauce and Jojo fries. Yum. I love the sauce. It looks delightful. Shrimp scampi with linguine and we get green beans and rad radicchio. I, f I keep forgetting I'm so far away. I'll try to make these pictures a little closer. So we have shaved Brussels sprout salad. This can go with a whole bunch of things. This would be an easy staple to just have. You just have Brussels sprouts on hand, and then you can make the dressing and you have a really easy salad. Sweet potato pierogies. We also have a roasted kielbasa with pickled mustard seeds. Yum. Roasted acorn squash. And we also have a spinach salad and it looks like chicken maybe here in the previous, uh, the previous page. Cast iron ribeyes with crispy smashed potatoes and a frise and bacon salad. That looks so yummy. I mean, and I would probably have this any time of year. Summertime would be good, winter time. This looks so yummy too. Everything looks very tasty in this cookbook. Some more step-by-step -step, uh, photos here. Let me go back to that. This look. This is a um, ricotta cavi cavatelli. If you wanted to make your own. And, of course, meatballs. That looks really good. I like that everything looks really just healthy. And he gives us suggestions on, like, when to even prepare them. I saw... Like on Sundays, we enjoy to we enjoy making this on you know a Sunday just because you get so many leftovers. Chicken paprikash and spetzel, yum! I wish I could have spetzel. It sounds really tasty. Pork and meatball, or pork meatballs and sauerkraut. Then we also have an apple and Brussels sprout salad and an apple pear sauce that goes with this. Chicken pot pie. That is a fantastic. Crust. Okay, I'm going to move forward even further because I'm stuck on this. This cookbook, I, I do think, has a photo for every recipe. You will at least see it on the table or it will be there. It might not necessarily be spot lit. Like, for instance, you know, we have bread and we have, the well, it's pound cake, and we have this beautiful sauce here. So it's sharing space, but I like that. Brown butter upside down cake. So there are desserts in here, lemon coconut cake roll, and there are cocktails in here, remember. So we have a vodka punch, another great idea. I think punches need to come back. I, I don't know why we've gone from single cocktails to, uh, it, in, or we've gone from punches to single cocktails for parties. Like, I get it. Not everybody likes the same spirit, but it's just a lot easier. You could do two punches different flavor profiles. Here we have an Aperol and citrus slush, slushy, yum. And finally, before I show all of the cookbook, we have a Pim's cup, very cute. And in the very back, if you are interested, 
Here is that chart that they were talking about in the very beginning. So if it's flour free, dairy free, meat free, and the page numbers, very handy, so that's cool. And if you, you know, if you do become a little more familiarized with some of these substitutes, you could probably substitute a lot of these things out and adjust them as you need. I, I didn't see any substitutes while we were going through the book itself, but that's okay. A lot of this is very simple ingredients. It's approachable, it's not too fancy, and it doesn't go, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to go out and buy anything crazy spectacular. So this is Simply Simon Suppers. It's awesome, easy to plan your meals every single week. If you're looking for some quick and easy cookbooks, we do have a playlist for that, so check it out. Or, and, or and join us on our socials that's listed down below in the description check out michael simons uh, i personally need to because i actually really love it so check him out that's also in our description thank you so much for watching let us know in the comments what cookbooks you want us to look through next time